Welcome to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome inside the KDK studios for today's Extra Point show as the Steelers fall to two and six heading into a bye week. The season pretty much on ice, I would think, in terms of a playoff position. No team in the history of the league has ever come back from a 2-6 record to make the playoffs, although there's one extra game here, so that may change that dynamic. Who knows? But this was just a bad performance all the way through. Bob Pompiani here, Chris Hoke, and Chris, I mean, I don't know where we start other than Philadelphia pretty much had their way offensively with this defense. We're going to talk about the struggles of the offense, but this is the highest paid defense in the NFL. That's true. They're not playing anywhere near. I know their injuries. I know how important T.J. Watt is, but my goodness, you have an eight-play drive, a five-play drive, a three-play drive, and a two-play drive, and all these touchdown passes over 30 yards. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable, but you got to take away a big portion of being the you know, highest-paid defense in the NFL is T.J. Watt. Without him in the game, I mean, the first quarter we watched this game, Bob, and then the dam broke, and the water just started to flow, and they went on to score 28 more points, and Steelers only got – what, one more field goal, two more field goals on top of that? It just wasn't a game. The Steelers were settling for field goals. The Eagles were scoring touchdowns, and this thing just blew up. Yeah, and the one touchdown drive for the Steelers was actually uh, greatly benefited by two penalties on Philadelphia. Yeah. One was a sack that was going to put the Steelers back at like third and 20, but that was a race because of a uh, pass interference call. Uh, against Bradbury and then there was um, the number 55 uh, Brandon Graham chirping at the line of scrimmage which was called whatever it was called I don't even understand the official <laughs> that <laughs> with the explanation but it set up a nice play call that resulted yeah. in a touchdown pass from Claypool to Derek Watt of all things so that was it for the offense after that and uh, you know quite frankly this is um, a mismatch, a total mismatch. Total mismatch. You can see the Steelers were outmanned in this game. And it's funny you talk about Brandon Graham. That happened to me one time down in Tennessee uh, when we played the Titans. I did that hut hut and got thrown a flag and, and was able to give them a first down. So I know what that goes like. There was no first down here, but still it gave the Steelers an opportunity to go for it and get a touchdown. And that was it. I mean, it was a wrap for the Steelers offense, that fun touchdown drive right there. And it was a struggle just to move the ball, Bob. You know, one for 12 on third down. Mm. One for 12 on third down. You can't win ball games going one for 12. Now, people will say, yeah, but they went four for four on fourth. Okay, let's give them five for 12. Still not good enough. Yeah, one for 12 on third down. One of those four for four was a fake punt, yeah. and, and it worked, and that's fine and everything, but that's it's totally misleading. This game was over, and the fact that Philadelphia kind of called off their players and they were putting everybody else in the game, and it seemed like uh, almost a college atmosphere, like one of those games that you just expect to end, and it's just not a good look as the Steelers fall to two and six. We have a lot coming up here today. We're going to have Mike Tomlin's press conference from the link we're also going to have player interviews and a little later we'll take your calls on this at 412-575-2600 but so many ways to go you talked about one for 12 um and george pickens three targets no, no touch catch. no catches no nothing and i didn't understand that at all he's yeah. a big playmaker for this team you look at stats at the end of the game and you come away confused by that one we had the one we had the push off right mm -hmm. a nice catch and then the other one it should have been challenged we, i'm sure we'll talk about that when the calls come in but tomlin didn't think to challenge that call when it, I thought it was a catch. So really, at the end of the day, nothing to be heard of from, um, from him, Pickens, in this game. And really, you think the only one that really produced offensively, other than a catch here from Chase Claypool, was Fryermuth. He was the only one over the middle, which we've been calling for for weeks, and they gave it to us. It just wasn't enough. How would you assess Kenny Pickett's performance? Fourth quarter, once again, not very good. And quite frankly, if you look at the numbers, four full games, if you factor all up, nine turnovers in those four games. Yeah, listen, I mean, two touchdowns, seven, eight interceptions in those games that he started. And when you look at this game today, to me it seemed like he was able to at times get the ball out quick and, and the short little passes down to Najee. But he missed a lot of throws, Bob. You and I watched this game together. And we watched where Najee was open and he took a sack. Or he would throw the ball away. Or he didn't see the extra defender coming on a blitz and he took a sack. He's got to be able to recognize an unblocked blitzer coming and get rid of the ball. Either check it down or throw it out of bounds. He can't take big sacks. He didn't get help, though. If you watch in this game, when the when Eagles blitzed, the Steelers were getting knocked right into his lap. When the, Steel, when the Steelers blitzed, we couldn't get any pressure. The Eagles were able just to blow up the blockers, the offensive linemen, into Kenny's lap, 
it was a tough it was a tough matchup yeah. for the Steelers today. There's no question. And Philadelphia has one of the more intriguing defenses, I think, in the NFL. Made it very difficult. If you look at the rushing yards, you would come away thinking, oh, the Steelers had a pretty good rushing day because it said 24 carries, 144 yards, a six-yard average. But factor into that, Kenny Pickett, he was running the ball, and sometimes he had no other choice but to run the ball. You take that away and everything else, you're going to come away with, like, Najee Harris, uh, basically seven carries for 14 yards. You add the 18-yarder in there, which was his longest, eight for 32. Jalen Warren always seems more intriguing to me when I look at this. I know he's not a first-round pick. I know he's going to take a back seat to Najee Harris, but quite frankly, when you see him run the ball, Chris, he, he doesn't hesitate. He gets right to the line of scrimmage, and Najee Harris had the one play in particular where he was, he, yeah, he was, that was close down. to the first down, and for whatever reason, he kind of tap-danced. Jalen Warren gets in the game and he hit, puts his foot in the ground. He's downhill and he's fast. He's quick to speed really fast. Najee Harris is thinking too much. He comes up, gets the ball and he's dancing and he's looking for the hole rather than putting his foot in the ground and going that we saw last year. We, we, we were talking about that one play when it's third and two, Bob, and they came back in the fourth down and he converted it the same type of play. He gets the ball in the flat. He has four or five yards of green grass in front of him. What does he do? He dances, he thinks, and all of a sudden he gives time for these fast defenders to close on him. He can't get the first down. They got to go for it on fourth down there. And that's part of the reason why they can't move the chains. They can't stay on schedule is because Najee's having a tough time getting up in the hole and pressing the, the, the field and getting yardage. And, and it's making the offense sputter. This was not a good weekend in Pittsburgh sports. When you think about it, the Steelers get blown out today. You saw the Penguins yeah. lose four in a row on the road. All regulation last night they lost. Uh, if you like a, whatever local team you follow, Pitt, West Virginia, Penn State, they all lost. <laughs> CMU won. That was good. They, they had we'll a pretty, take it. We got CMU, one win. CMU is a pretty good football team. Right. So anyway, we're going to take a break. We have player reaction. We have Mike Tomlin's press conference. We have your calls all coming up. You're watching the Extra Point right here on KDKA TV after the Eagles come away with a fairly easy 35-30 team win to drop the Steelers to two and six heading into a bye week and the trade deadline which is Tuesday. We'll talk more about that coming up right here on KDK. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers extra point. Welcome back everyone. Bob Pompey and Chris Hoke with you until six o'clock here on KDK. So we have a lot of ground to cover. The scoring summary on this game today, well, it started real quick because the first offensive possession after the Steelers go three and out with airs is a Jalen Hurts 39-yard touchdown pass to Brown. And boy, was he good today. Uh, three of those touchdown passes, that made it seven and nothing. Then we saw the penalties help the Steelers put together a drive, which resulted in their only touchdown of the game. And it was a trick play of sorts or a sequence play off a jet sweep, Clay, uh, Chase Claypool with a pass. Uh, and it's Derek Watt with a touchdown. After that, it was simply all Philadelphia. Big plays, short drives, three more touchdown passes for Jalen Hurts. And then at the end, Miles Sanders goes 11 yards. Again, that was a two-play 54-yard drive. It's almost as if there was no one there uh, defending. And that gets back to uh, the question of coaching, just generally. I mean, Mike Tomlin says this is a, a results-oriented business. And quite frankly, they came out three and out, same old kind of play calling in the first drive of the game. That was followed by a long touchdown drive, which didn't seem to have much resistance at all. Chris, how much of this is on the preparation that this team puts forward? They say they're prepared, but it doesn't yeah. sound that way in the first quarter of games. They're often behind real quick. Well, listen, I'm always a guy that says players play and coaches coach. But when you see the same mistakes mm -hmm. happening over and over again, you either got the wrong guys on the field or the guys aren't, or the coaches aren't able to get it into the heads of the players. Coach Mitchell, one of the greatest coaches to ever coach for the Steelers, would always say, I know the game plan, I know what to do, but I need to make sure that you guys know the game plan and know what you, and then you know what you're supposed to do. And that's part of the problem here. I don't know if a lot of these guys know where they fit in the defense. There's times when Miles Jack in the run game, you see some of these runs, he's not getting over the top or he's not seeing that the eighth defender, which is the safety, Millette stepping up into the box or Edmonds, that he's got help and that he doesn't need to worry about that backside gap, but he plays backside and lets the front side gap open up for a run. And that, that happens in other positions as well. Or you see guys getting, getting knocked out of their holes. You see Mika today took some bad angles on some passes. He should have had that interception. Go high point the ball. I mean, mm -hmm. your best, one of the best safeties in the NFL has to get that ball. So there's a breakdown at different positions on the defense, and you're seeing it offensively too. One of the guys on defense, Cam Sutton, uh, he spoke after the game. Let's hear what he had to say. It's not necessarily just one thing. I think it's just kind of a collection of um, just different things, you know, what the, what the game brings you, um, just kind of situational and uh, certain scenarios that happen throughout the course of the game or throughout weeks. And uh, we just got to 
keep putting ourselves in the best position to, you know, <laughs> come out with wins. It's easy to keep saying that, but, um, you know, something's got to give, man. Uh, yeah, some, something's got to give. So, I mean, just keep coming back. Um, guys are, you know, playing with a lot of effort. Guys are playing, you know, um, you know to the best of abilities. And I don't know. It's just uh, obviously frustrating. But, uh, yeah, just come back out of the bye. We can get back on, our, back on the right track. I know you guys look at those 35 points. I mean, that's unlike, I mean, the Steelers' defense giving up that many points. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, it is what it is right now. Uh, not to say it in that manner, but you know, we we're not stopping people either. So um, I'm never a person to single anybody out outside of even myself. And uh, um, I just got to control what I can, get these guys moving in the right direction, like I said, and just be that leader to these guys. Um, a lot of ball. But uh, like I said we just can't we can't keep letting these weeks fly by and, and not being able to turn around and, and make the adjustments and do the right things we need to to, to get to where where we want to be. Did the bye week come at a good time. Um, I, 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 for sure, that's always you know that's week in week out. You know whether we win or we lose, you know they always have to come together, regroup. Um, it's always something to learn necessary from the game. Um, and just like again, just certain situations um, that happen out there on the field. Um, whether you're going to see it next week or whether you're going to see it five weeks from now, you know, um, it's a copycat league. You know, it's uh, not necessarily um, all about the offensive scheme um, at the time. Um, it's just kind of putting the guys in the right position, um, trying to get the right matchup or just trying to get certain looks. You know, that's the, that's the battle of the game. And, um, you know, we just got to do a great job, of obviously, you know, recognizing those situations, obviously, um, there's never necessarily a, 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 a best call or, or the right call. You know, whatever call is, is being locked in on the calls and um, just doing your job, man. I mean, that's just do your job. So. Now, there you see Rich Walsh in the locker room, a very quiet locker room. They don't seem to have many answers here. And quite frankly, the defense, once again, when they had opportunities to maybe bail an offense out. And it's interesting when you sit and watch with a guy like, Chris Hoke, because he gets emotional up there. He, he wants to still be on that defensive line, but strip sack on Kenny Pickett. Yeah. I mean, he was under assault. He come, two plays later, they score two very big plays. It, it didn't happen. take long. A defense at that point doesn't have to step well, up. Think, at that time, it was a two points game, right. and it was early in the fourth quarter. And then Kenny gets sack fumble, right? Dotson gets beat twice. Javon Hargrave beats him there with a sack fumble, and then they cover the ball. The Eagles go two plays, bop. Two plays, they go 54 yards. The first play was a 43-yard pass, and uh, A.J. Brown, he goes all the way down to the 11-yard line. Minka Fitzpatrick takes a bad angle. You're all pro safety, and finally gets him down at the 11. Then the very next play, Miles Sanders scores. I mean, untouched, he runs into the end zone uh, for 11-yard touchdown run. And you, you got to be able to compliment. When the offense turns the ball over, the defense with sudden change has to get on the field and they have to get the ball, stop and get the ball back to your offense. That's not happening. Yeah, not at all. Too many chunk plays, big time. It's been the problem all season long. Mike Tomlin addressing the media. Let's go back to the link. You know, I like to start by complimenting the Eagles um, on a game well played, on their victory. Um, but, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's less about what they do and about the things that we're not doing. Um, we're not positioning ourselves to win games. We didn't today. And we got to own that. Um, some fundamental things are falling short. Um, we got to keep a lid on it. If you don't keep a lid on it in the NFL, man, you don't give a chance to self. You don't give yourself a chance to play. Um, we didn't do that, um, and I thought it was a domino effect from there on. I thought our eyes weren't in the right place uh, defensively, and and it's capable of happening um, when you're not keeping a lid on it. You got to keep a lid on it. Um, I thought we were too penalized. Um, I look at those penalties. Um, some of them I thought was questionable, but that's life. Um, but neither here nor there. I just thought the penalty component of it and our inability to keep a lid on it um, with Steelers versus Steelers. And when you're playing good people like this group, um, you know, you're not going to put yourself in position to do the things you need to do. Um, from a health standpoint, uh, James Pierre has got a foot that's being evaluated. Uh, the rest of it is what it is. Uh, questions? I keep a lid on it. It looked like on at least two of Brown's touchdowns, you were in position. 
you know, position is just a component of playmaking. Um, the finish is probably as equally as important as the positioning. And, and we were in position, um, but their guy made a play and we didn't. Uh, we were in one one circumstances on the other side of the ball, and it was a different outcome. One time we was out of bounds. One time it was OPI. One time the dot, the ball, um, the ground dislodged the ball, and you know that's that's the minutia, that's the playmaking, that's the that's the difference. They were making those plays, and we were not. And um, we got to own that. We got to see it with clear eyes, and make no mistake, we do. Um, it's nothing comfortable about it, but we see it with clear eyes. Um, we got to make those plays. Um, we got to break those balls up or catch them on defense. We got to finish them legally on offense, inbounds or, or, or otherwise. Mike, do you give your guys enough chance to get over the top? How so? Mike, enough shots down the field. You know, their rush has got a component, is a component of it, particularly when you get somewhat one dimensional and you get down by a number of scores. Um, you know, the secondary is playing soft. The, the four-man rush has got their ears pent back when you're down by multiple scores. And the later you get in the game, the less likelihood that you're going to get those type of plays that you suggest. And that's just how ball goes. And that's why the games need to be close to, to keep everything at your disposal. When they're not, when they're multiple possession games and time is winding down, it gets extremely difficult to get the ball over the top coupled with protecting your quarterback. And as you can see, we, we turned the ball over late probably because of those reasons. I thought to that point, we'd done a good job of taking care of the football. We knew the turnover component of this game was going to be big, but the dam broke because time became of the essence and we were down by multiple scores and that's how they function. Mike, was Witherspoon's hamstring okay or did he come off the before? No, there's no excuses regarding um, the play that we put out there, whether it's one of us as an individual or us as a collective. Um, I wouldn't put him on the field if he wasn't ready to go. How do you kind of how do you stop what's been what's going on? How do you stop Keep working. Um, you know, we obviously got an opportunity to to assess ourselves, man, and 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 get rightly focused and get better, and that's what we intend to do. Um, words are not going to get it done, man. Actions are, and so um, we're going to work hard to say very little, and 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 roll our sleeves up and continue this process. Uncharted territory here, obviously, you and the Steelers. Um, does anything change about your mindset or your approach? What do you mean by uncharted territory? Two and six. I've probably been there before. Yeah. Anyone else? Mike, when you're talking about fixing things with the penalties, it's frustration level with that, and how do you go about fixing those? Just things? fundamental things. We'll get officials at practice. We'll you know, focus on the things that, that, that are you know, problematic for us, obviously. Uh, particularly in this this opportunity that's called the bye week. Do you see more emphasis on these illegal shifts and motion penalties? <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> it really does. Mike, you assess everything. Does that include the coaching staff? Who you have? Hey, we we're, we're we're two and six guys. I'm not going to answer that question every week. Um, uh, I'm I'm open to doing whatever is required for us to get better. Um, and and that's just how it is, man. Uh, we're seriously committed to winning and being better, and that's just a component of it. What you could tell on the sideline is the ball going where it was supposed to go was picking. Oh, yeah. You know, we just, you know, we didn't keep a lid on it today, guys. Man, you you give up three of those tight balls in the first half, man, it's going to be helter-skelter, and that's just the reality of it. Does getting better involve you utilizing younger players, taking more of a developmental approach, or the same thing, just you know, Sunday after Sunday? No, we're going to build plans to win games on the weekends that we play, I promise you. How did you think Kenny played today? You know, we, we all weren't good enough today. Um, I'll just assess it in that way. Um, I know what you mean. He's a young guy. He's getting an opportunity to play and all of that. I just, I'm just not in that frame of mind right now. I'm assessing what transpired from a collective perspective. So the word you kept hearing, keep a lid on it. You've heard that from him <laughs> oh, before. Oh, many times. Many today times. he used that quite a bit. So that's the phrase that they keep a lid on it. Why couldn't they? And they haven't done that all year. They haven't kept a lid on, or they have. They've left it open, yeah. and all these teams have gone right by and scored big well, touchdowns. Well, it's a combination, right, of just great throws and catches, but also it's guys not making plays when the ball's there. I mean, you think about that first touchdown pass had to A.J. Brown, a 39-yarder over the middle. Terrell Edmonds was there, and you had Minka over the top. Minka's got to go high point that ball. Uh, he wasn't even playing A.J. Brown. He was playing the ball, and he caught it. He tried to catch it here at his waist, and A.J. Brown took it right out of his hands or right before it got to his hands. Then the other two A.J. Brown uh, passes – the, the two there 
were beautiful throws, beautiful throws. And the second one, Minka should have hit the ball out, mm. but didn't hit it again. And I just think there that they were execution on the Eagles, but also lack of taking advantage of an opportunity by the Steelers defenders. Yeah, you don't expect that from Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, that's a guy who's supposed to make those kind of, it looked like he was enamored with the interception, yeah. not so much knocking the pass down on the yeah. big one to Brown, the first of three on the day. We're going to take a break. We have more coming up, more interviews from the locker room, and then we'll take your calls a little bit later as well. As the Steelers lose 35-13 to drop two, two wins, six losses. When we come back, we'll talk about what happens on this bye week and the trade deadline. That's all next. 35-13, your final score from Philadelphia. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. It's time to check out the J.P. Roofing final stats here, Chris. Um, these are a little misleading. If you look yeah. at time of possession, you know, Philadelphia is the number one time of possession mark in the NFL. Today, they didn't need time. All they needed was a few plays, and boom, long drives, few plays, exploiting the Steelers defense. Yeah, and, and those numbers there don't really tell me the story because it was in the first half where the Eagles really pulled this thing away. And in the second half, it was that sack fumble that turned the game for me. It was a two-score game. The Steelers were driving the ball. So that, to me, is the stat right there. Turnovers, two. Pittsburgh turned the ball over twice. Philadelphia, zero. And, Bob, they're playing against a team right now that has thir at the 13 turnover ratio, plus 13, best in the NFL. Yeah, two turnovers today for the Steelers, zero for Philadelphia. So that goes up to plus 14 now, which is the top mark and a big reason why that team is still undefeated at 7-0. and They have a short week going Thursday. I think they play at Houston or Houston comes there, but it's a short week. One of the reasons why they may have taken their guys out as well. Minka Fitzpatrick spoke after the game. Let's go and hear what he had to say. I make a play in the ball. Uh, I get paid to make plays on the ball and I, I didn't do that. Um, that's it. Just got to make plays in the ball. Him and Terrell were just talking about, you know, it's, it's not just one thing. It's a lot of things that they think that you guys have to fix now. I think, I think I think it's simple. I think we got to make plays in the ball and we got to have our eyes in the right place. Can the bye week come at a good time ever? I know it always seems people talk about whether it's early or late, but do you feel like this is a good time for you guys? Um, yeah, I think there's a lot that we need to focus on, improve on, have a sense of urgency uh, in regards to, to fixing um, certain things. So I think it's a good time for the bye. One thing, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you probably feel this way, 35 points, that's unlike a Steelers defense to give up that many points. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, your opinion on you know, what's kind of going on, you think, right now? Just can't do it. we got to make plays in the ball. Uh, they started the game off with a big play that I could have easily got, and I, I didn't make a play on. Should have been a pick, a little return, you know what I'm saying? So the dynamic of the game is totally different uh, with that, you know what I'm saying? So. I got to make plays that, that come my way. Every single one of them can't have any lapses or, or, or errors in, in that regards. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like, like you said, it's unlike ourselves, and we need to get back to playing the way that we play. When you look at that first touchdown, did you, did you think he was going to come back to the ball? I mean, obviously, you probably would have played it a little bit differently. I thought, I thought our, my guy was in between him and the ball and that he wasn't able to come, come back to the ball. That's why I kind of faded away from it. It's, it's easier to catch like that than, than ch uh, going towards the ball. Um, but I think he, he just got in between uh, my guy and, and the ball. That's one of the things that you saw a lot of. They were actually in position to make three plays defensively that would have not allowed those big uh, completions and touchdowns. Yeah. But on all three times, whether it's um, Witherspoon not looking back at the ball, at, the, at some point you have to look back at the ball, don't you, if you're yeah. going to make that play. You just you can't assume because It's awareness. He it. knows. You knew right away when that happened that he made a mistake. He should have gone up and high pointed the ball, and he said he faded away to catch the ball. I don't think he had awareness of where A.J. Brown was at that time. And here's what happens with a guy like Mika Fitzpatrick is he's in this game, and there's no margin for error. And a guy like him, he makes his money by taking chances and going up and making plays. And at times, he'll get beat, but the majority of the time he'll make plays, Bob. Mm -hmm. But with this offense, you can't take chances because you don't have a margin for error and you can't recover if you give up a play. That's the problem right now. And then you have guys like Minka and other Cam Hayward and other guys that are trying to cover for guys that aren't doing their jobs because they're, they're, just, they're getting beat, flat out getting beat, and then they get out of position. And so this is really just a, a, a ball that is rolling that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger for this defense. It's a good time for a bye week to be able to sit back and just take a deep breath and try to re reset the whole defense going forward in the second half. Yeah, you know, 
bye weeks to come good times, bad times. Who knows what's the right time? But I want to ask you, you've been in that locker room, you've gone through bye weeks. Uh, how should this bye week be handled? Typically, Mike Tomlin will just let them yeah. go Wednesday or Thursday. Should there be more work this week? Even well, though it's a bye week. Well, it's going to be a lot of work for the coaches. I think they need to go back and they need to watch film. And there's going to be some changes, whether it's roles, whether there's coaches. There's got to be changes because right now things are not working for the Steelers. And so they'll go back and they'll watch their, their tape. They'll go back and they'll see how they've called plays and make adjustments. And then you got the young guys. Coach Tomlin always likes to use his bye weeks, Bob, to work the young guys and get them some reps and get them working and rest the guys like Minka and Cam Hayward and the older fellas. And so you'll see a little bit of that but I believe he'll let these guys off a little early. Just let them clear their mind, get away from the game, and reset themselves and come back, hopefully, for a stretch to try to get back to, to, seven, to 500 because right now, 2-6 and six is just not getting it done. When you're the offensive coordinator, there is a lot of pressure. Matt Canada has been in it. He talks about it. He understands what's going on. Do you suspect there will be a change? You may not notice the change because the Steelers don't necessarily make that available. In other words, play calling may be taken away from him if it hasn't already been. Would you do that or would you just flat out make a change? But I, don't, I don't know who they would put in that position because usually you would have a guy at the receiver spot. I know the quarterback coach has called plays in the past, but how much success has he had? How much? How many changes are going to be made if you get rid of uh, Matt Canada. So I just don't know who are they going to next. That's my issue here. But you know, you can see that happening. That's what everybody wants. But I know this: Coach Tomlin never crumbles to the pressure of Steeler Nation or anybody in Pittsburgh. No. And, I, and normally, if this is going to happen, it'll happen after the season. But Mike Sullivan does have experience with the Giants calling plays. Yeah. If that should happen, uh, we'll talk more about the bye week and also the trade deadline coming up here. But Deontay Johnson. Uh, also spoke after the game. Let's go to uh, Lincoln Financial Field. Rich Walsh was there for that. Uh, we just got to go back to the drawing board, try to find a plan, and uh, try to figure out something to try to win. You know, uh, we out there uh, just trying to do something at the end of the day. And, uh, stuff may not be falling our way, but, you know, at the end of the day, we just got to keep playing. Is it one thing or a combination of a bunch of things that just aren't going right? I don't want to get into specific details on that, you know. I just do what the coaches tell us, do, tell me to do, and we do what they tell us to do, and uh, go out there and try to execute the plays the best of our ability. I think the bye week is coming at a good time. Can you guys like regroup or team meetings or whatever you need to do? Uh, hopefully, we can come back from the bye week and uh, try to turn it around. Uh, like I said, we just got to keep working. There's no excuses. That's all we can do. Deontay, when you're standing on the sidelines and you see them take shots down the field like that, what goes through your mind? I mean, you you obviously want to go out there and do the same thing, but like I say, stuff not falling our way right now. Uh, just got to keep playing. Some going, some going to uh, happen eventually, so just keep working like I was saying earlier. You were animated at the end of the first half. You were talking to Coach Tomlin. Um, what were you upset about? I wasn't upset about nothing. Just frustrated game emotion uh, with the game or whatever, but um, I just play, play with emotion sometimes, and that's – that's what it was. It ain't nothing specific. If Deontay, is, it, is your feeling is there's just too much talent on the offense that it's, it's about it has to turn around at some point? There's a lot of talent on the offense. Um, it sucks that we're not, you know, playing with, uh, to our best ability right now. You know, um, like I said, we just got to figure something out and go back to the drawing board. Hopefully something shake. Deontay Johnson after the game. Uh, they also have a trade deadline in the NFL. Typically, you don't see a lot of activity already. We have seen a couple of moves. One of them you saw today, Robert Quinn uh, traded from Chicago to Philly. They doubled down on their depth in that department. The guy who had 18 and a half sacks didn't play all that much, but he will be a factor. Uh, and, and then you saw Kansas City pick up a, a receiver who was a former number one pick of the Giants last year. And it's strange to see them give up on a guy who they yeah. just took. That leads me to ask you about what happens with the Steelers, only because there are going to be some teams that will be looking for pieces. The Steelers are two and six, likely not going to get to the postseason. Do they make a move to try to come up with extra draft picks for next year? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you, you, I could see something happening with a player going out. I don't see a player coming in right now with two and six. You're not going to make a push for a playoff spot, most likely. But you can see maybe people talking about Chase Claypool being traded. If there is a need on another team, they need a receiver, and they think that's the missing piece. Or maybe a quarterback. A team needs a quarterback. Maybe you see Mason, Mason Rudolph getting pushed and moved right now because – they really are out of it, and this could help the team in the future to, to acquire more draft picks to build this team out because there's a lot of holes, Bob, on this roster. Yeah, there really are. We heard Bill Cower after the game was critical of how the Steelers are handling Kenny Pickett. We're going to talk about that when we come back. 
and more. We got more interviews on the way. We have your calls coming up. We'll be on the air. Cam Hayward will be next talking to you about what happened today defensively. It's all next right here on KDKA. Stick around. Steelers lose by 22 points to the Eagles and fall to two wins and six losses. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers extra point. We're back in time for our number one Cochran player of the game today. We're going to give it to Malik Reed who was active today from the edge part of the game. Yeah, I thought he played tough. I'm really good on the edge in the run game and you saw there he had a tackle for a loss on top of four tackles and sack. The sack doesn't show really he had some other pressures as well um, on the quarterback. And so you're looking right here Malik Reed's best game as a Steeler unfortunately came on a day where they took a licking on the field. Yeah, they certainly need TJ Watt to come back and he will most likely after the break. They have New Orleans coming to uh, Acrisure Stadium and that should help things defensively. But I still have questions about how much offense can improve. They're just not scoring a number of points at all. If you look at it, the most output we've seen from a Steeler team is 20 points twice this year. Everything else has been 13 10 today. Another 13 three. You, you got to score more points. You cannot win in the NFL when you average 15 points or 14 points a game. As of right now, the Steelers are the 32nd ranked offense in the NFL going behind mm. now the Denver Broncos. I mean, when have you seen this? I mean, we haven't seen this because the Ben Roethlisberger era just ended and it never happened when Ben was on the team. And right now, this offense is struggling, this defense is struggling. It is a total team effort on both sides of the ball right now. And what they've got to do, Bob, they've got to get back to doing what the Steelers do best. And I keep saying, and I'll harp on this till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> they've got to get back to running the football. When the Steeler teams play well and we win, we run the football and we make it our focus right now today, Kenny Pickett threw the ball 38 times, 38 times for a rookie. That's a lot for a guy, and a lot of those are checkdowns, all that. I get it. But they've got to line up, and they've got to play physical football, and I think they've got to make some changes. They've got to get more, more, more runs and more attempts to Jalen Warren. He's got to run the ball Absolutely. more. Absolutely. He's got, he hits downhill. He gets positive mm -hmm. yarded. Najee thinks too much. Let him, let him get back a little bit. Yep. Let him clear his mind. I don't know what's going on there, but Jalen Warren is obviously, everybody would say it, is the better running back right now. And I think Mike Tomlin has indicated by that. In the meantime, uh, we're going to hear from Cam Hayward right now. We'll do that, and we'll continue the conversation about the offense. Ooh, um, there's a lot going wrong. Um, You know, I think, you know, defensive side, uh, big plays. Um, first half, you stop the run. Second half, you give it up. Um, pressure can be in inconsistent sometimes. Um, but overall, there's just, you know, um, our eye discipline on both sides of the ball is very poor. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a multitude of things going wrong. But we got to clean it up. Uh, you know, we got two weeks to think about this, and uh, you know, we got to grow. Cam, as you were saying, you see some lack of accountability. Do you see that as well? If so, how do you correct that? Um, either either you you learn and are accountable, or you're not going to play. Um, you know, we've had what. We've had a, we're in we're going into week eight or something, and um, you know we've all been given chances to succeed. At it. If you if you can't do it, you won't play. Um, you know that goes for everybody. I'm not single one guy out. We all got to be accountable for it, myself included. As a leader, I got to take most most of the blame. Um, you know, there's a um, you know it's easy to point. It's better to you know look yourself in the mirror and say we got to I got to get better. So. Um, I'm going to use this time to truly do that. Cam, do you ever think, like, uh, you know, collectively, we're not good enough? Does that ever enter your head? Or no. You... No. When you, when you have but when you play like that, <laughs> you know, it, it tells on yourself. And um, there's a dysfunction uh, in what we're putting on the field right now. When you have so many things you need to work on, do you want to get back out there right away, or is it good maybe to have this week? So, yeah. um, we've been going through these laws of losses, um, and uh, you know, there's an eagerness to, you know, get this bad taste out of your mouth. Um, got two weeks to really.
dive in and see what's going on. Um, a lot of times you don't get to address all the problems you want to do because you got to move on to the next opponent. You know they're going to hit you in those, those, but now we get to really sit back and see what the hell is going on. And um, I'm looking forward to diving into that. Can we reference eye discipline? Mm -hmm. uh, Defensive-wise, you know, the RPO games. Um, you know, one guy not taking his assignment, and then, you know, it's one guy in one play, it's another guy on another play. Um, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, pass rush on both sides, uh, understanding run and pass keys, uh, understanding the one-on-ones. Um, you know, that can be offensive, defensive line. Um, and then just, you know, the lack of splash we're having. Um, it's unacceptable. Can you mention looking yourself in the mirror, but at the same time as a leader of this team, what are you saying to your guys? Um, I haven't said it yet. You know, um, we'll get back to Pittsburgh and you know really digest this film, but uh, don't hide from it. You know, expose the wounds. Um, that's the only way you get better. Um, you know, not speaking up, not being accountable, not asking the questions. Um, you know, that, that, set, that sets us back um, when guys, um, you know, and, and everybody in our group, um, when we're not asking the right questions and we're not taking the accountability and we're not taking it onto the practice field and then to the game, um, you know, there's a, there's a dysfunction there. You said the splash, let me say, well, what about the splash against you? Um, they played all the yeah, time. you know, I think um, going into this game, um, they had only turned over the ball twice. Um, but they had gotten 12 turnovers on the other side of the ball. Um, we knew it was going to be a low turnover affair, but uh, we needed to force the issue on defense, and we needed to protect it on offense. Um, they got a, a strip um, in the third, uh, and then they got an interception late. Uh, and so, you know, the, you put in situations where you got to throw the ball, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, you're going to, you know, be more prone to those mistakes. But on the defensive defensive side of the ball, they're just going to run the ball, and then we're going to protect it. So, um, you know, when you have that recipe, um, no turnovers on our side, more turnovers on theirs. It's Cam Hayward, always accountable afterwards, talking about it. He, he said a lot of people have said lack of discipline, which to me translates into preparation. Does it translate to preparation yeah, for well, you? Yeah, what I'm hearing there from Cam really concerns me. And you've seen Cam kind of say these kind of things in the last few weeks after the game. He talked about eye discipline. He talked about guys doing their jobs. And what now what you're seeing on the defensive side of the ball is what I talked about earlier, Bob, is that the guys are coming out and they're not having their eyes on their keys, meaning, for example, an RPO we talked about. When you're a backside inside linebacker and Jalen Hurts fakes the handoff, your eyes should be on that quarterback. You should know where the quarterback goes. So if the quarterback keeps the ball, you're the one that's got to step up and play him. The outside linebacker always got to crash and take out the running back. That didn't happen. Devin Bush went with the run, didn't have his eyes where it was supposed to be. Terrell Edmonds, right, it's on that touchdown mm -hmm. pass to Pascal. Those things are happening too often, and that's what he's talking about. And then on the offensive side of the ball, Kenny Pickett tw uh, said in his postgame today, he said the playbook, we got to know what we're doing, not getting in the right spot, not having some procedural penalties, personnel in and out of the huddle, all things we can control. What's happening is these guys are showing a lack of focus, a lack of concentration, and discipline. They're not taking, like Cam said, from the classroom onto the practice field, and then from the practice field into stadiums. And that's where they're getting beat. It's getting, they're getting beat here, not physically. Well, I would, I would say physically they are getting beat on some aspects of it, especially line of scrimmage uh, offensively. Boy, they got blown up a lot, and that's going to be a problem trying but to that, get that run game but that's also, resurrected. That's also because they're not climbing alignment or not climbing to the linebacker. So do they know that they're supposed to, in those zone blocks, mm -hmm. that they're reaching to the next guy, that that guard is reaching to the tackle, that the center's trying to get beyond and get up to the linebacker? It's not happening, Bob. No. So what, is that a mental thing or is that a physical thing? To me, what I'm hearing from Cam Hayward and from Kenny Pickett is there is a breakdown in the mental preparation for these games. All right, we'll find out where that falls on. You heard Chris say Kenny Pickett did speak earlier, and here is what he had to say. Uh, Mike Tomlin talked about the game getting a little out of hand when they established the lead and knew you guys were going to throw it. Is that what it felt, what it felt like in the second half? It's kind of slowing up, Bill. Yeah, I mean, once you get one-dimensional, it's obviously really tough, especially against a you know top pass defense like that and a good pass rush. It makes it, makes it a lot tougher offensively, um, you know, so we can't let it get like that so we can stay you know two-dimensional, run the football, and also throw it. Kenny, what are you saying that you think are leading to some of the penalties that we've seen, especially on the offensive side? 
Yeah, not not detailed, you know, not detailed guys need to know what they're doing. Um, you know, we need to study more. I don't I don't think we study enough as a group. Um, there's way too many, you know, penalties and, and stuff like that, which, you know, we can control. It's all mental. Um, so for that to happen, there's really no excuse for that. So, you know, we have to figure that out and, and get it right. Yeah, you guys, you're putting together these long drives, lots of plays, eating up lots of minutes, um, moving the ball down the field, but it's not finishing. What's happening there? Yeah, well, you're on the field for 14 plays. You know, you're, you're leaving yourself open to, to make mistakes, whether that's physically, mentally, um, you know, you know, something's happened like that. So we need more explosive plays. Um, you know, we had opportunities today and, uh, you know, didn't connect on some, um, you know, penalties again hurt us. Um, so things like that, um, you know, when you're going 14 plays, 16 plays, it's, you know, something's going to happen, you know, sooner or later. Uh, you know, guys get tired up front. It just, you know, it, it causes problems. So it, it's a dual edged sword. It's good to stay on the field and, and control the football and, um, you know, chew some clock up, but we got to finish with points. And if we're not getting points, then it's really not, you know, doing us any good. How's your mindset, Kenny? You, the fourth time you're going to post game after losses each time, are you still, I mean, is this hard on you to, or is it you just keep? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a competitor. I want to win. So obviously it's hard. It's not going to, it's never easy. Um, losing is never easy. Um, so, you know, we got to get it fixed and, and get back to it. You say you guys need to study more you know, playbook, your film. Yeah, film. playbook, playbook. We got to know what we're doing. Um, you know, you know, not, not getting in the right spot, not, you know, having, having some procedural penalties, uh, personnel in and out of huddle, all things that we can control. That, that, there's no talent issues. You could go do that. You know, anyone in here could go do that um, as long as they know what they're doing. So we, we got we to get right there. Um, you know, it starts with me. I got to be, you know, you know, more on my, on my stuff, getting these guys right. Um, you know, and I'll take ownership of it. Along those lines, what is your message to your offense? What are you guys saying as you're going through adversity like you are? Yeah, I mean, we, we got to, you know, something's got to change, right? I mean, it's insane to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect something different. And, you know, we've been having these problems all year. So that's that has to get changed. That has to get fixed. Um, you know, we need, we need to look each other, you know, in the eyes and, and get it turned around. You know, we're only going to be able to do it. You know, coaches can say whatever they want. Everyone else in the media and, and fans can say what they want. But at the end of the day, it's, it's down to us. So um, we got to figure it out. Kenny, knowing that you have had the same problems week after week, with the bye week here, what approach do you take? Is it take some time away from things and reset, or is it come into the facility every single day? I mean, what can you do in this week's time to improve and get better? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I think um, you know we definitely have to get in and, and get things right, and you also need a mental you know mental break from it. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be here getting it right. So um, you know, we're gonna look at what we have have to do to get better. It definitely can't be the same. Um, like I said, I'm more frustrated with the penalties and the and the mental stuff that we're not doing offensively. You know, you can't you can't do it at this level. Get behind the sticks, and we have opportunity to make big plays. If we don't because of penalties and things that we can control. Uh, you know, that can't happen. Okay, it looked like you were pretty aggressive taking one on one shots today. Uh, anything consistent in what wasn't happening there? Um, I mean, we hit. Like, I mean, I got to look at the tape. I mean, he was out of bounds on the one on the, on the double move. Uh, we had the pi on the one. We we. I thought he caught on the one he didn't come down with it. So it's, it's just things like that, man. And then we had a nice PI on Ted. I don't think if he gets held there, I think we hit that one. Um, but you know, you'll, you'll take the PI. We're pushing it down the field. Uh, we got to do more of it. We got to get guys in space more to get, like I said, you, to get some more run after. Um, guys catching the ball on the move. Um, you know, that, that's me putting it on him and hitting him in stride and, and stuff like that. So there, there's a lot of things we got to work on. Um, you know, this bye week is huge for us to figure out what it is and what we got to do to turn it around and get it right. That's Kenny Pickett after the game. Uh, interesting quote, we need to study more. We don't study enough as a group. Mm. What does that mean? They're not spending time in the playbook. They're not spending time watching film together because offensively, you've got to be in sync. You've got to be in rhythm. And you saw a lot of, of personnel issues today in and out of the huddle like he was talking about. You saw false starts. You saw illegal formations. You saw uh, all those different types of penalties offensively. They are not in sync and it tells you that they're working as individuals rather than one unit. That's what he's talking about, Bob. Well, one thing that Bill Cowher said in his assessment of the Steelers is they're mishandling what they're doing with Kenny Pickett. Do you agree? Now, you said earlier yeah. too many passes. You think that's inordinate for a young guy yeah. to go through it, especially in the shotgun. Do you believe what Cowher believes? Yeah. He should be under center. I do but believe But if that. you can't run the ball, what are you supposed to do? You can't run the ball because it's not it's it's not a priority for you. You're not trying to run the football, and that's the thing. They've got to become a run first offense, and they've got to start it in practice, and then take it into the game and run the ball, run the ball, and then go try to get to, you know, third and short that way. Because right now, the majority of the time, Bob, the reason why they were one and twelve on third down is because they were third and long. 
they were not third and three, third and four. The majority of the time, I would say, I have to go back and look at the stats. I don't have them in front of me. But I would say most of those 12 third downs were third and five plus. Those are tough to convert in the NFL, especially against the number one defense in the NFL. And, and so that's where the Steelers put themselves in because they keep going back and throwing the ball, and it's just not moving the chains. It's not working on a rookie who, who just right now is trying to get his feet underneath him. And the other thing I look at statistically, I don't know if this is still the case, but the Steelers led the NFL in three and outs. They had yep. several more, including the very first possession today is three and out. And I'll ask from this point of view, the play calling on that first series looked the same as it's always been. First down run to Najee Harris, and then you try some underneath stuff, and next thing you know, you have third down and a little longer. Yeah. You try to go down the field a lot on third and short. I don't understand that. Just trying to extend the play. Why is that happening? Uh, it, it, the, the idea is to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers with some, with some grass in front of them, with some room so they can make some plays and get some yardage. But it's not happening. Teams are playing the Steelers where they're getting deep and making the Steelers do what they do. Throw the ball underneath, throw these quick comebacks, and then they tackle the catch. And they're saying, you're not going to throw the ball deep on us, and that's why they don't go deep a lot of the times. And, and so right here, what you're seeing is they try to run the football, but it's not working because they're not put together. And what I'm hearing here from Kenny Pickett is that it could be because of a lack of preparation mentally and as a group, as a unit. And that's what concerns me right now. Is, is that the reason why they're not moving the chains, or is it because physically – According to Kenny, it's because the mental preparation is not taking place. Right. He, he basically said there's not a talent issue, but if you look at some of the players on the offensive line, yes, there are a lot of penalties, but they're also losing individual yeah. matchups like Javon Hargrave totally dominating, I thought, yeah. Kevin Dotson today. And he's a guy they rely on over you, there. You know what Coach Tomlin always preaches? You either feel pressure or you apply it. And as Steelers, we apply the pressure. But the Steelers have been feeling the pressure and making those mistakes. And teams that aren't winning teams are the ones that make the mistakes because of the pressure. The Steelers went in to Philadelphia today, and they made mistakes because they felt the moment was too big for them. A lot of procedural penalties, a lot of pre-snap penalties. That's what put the Steelers behind the chains throughout this game. Yeah, and two of the elite teams they've played this year have completely dominated them. That's Buffalo and now today with Philadelphia. By week, and then it's home to New Orleans. And we'll find out a lot about this team as they move forward in the second half of the season at two wins and six losses. We'll take a break, come back with more right here on KDKA. Shortly, we'll be taking your calls on a special edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. There's your line score, 35-13. And basically, Nick Sirianni called off the players at the end of the third quarter. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. As we continue here on the Extra Point, Bob Pompiani, Chris Hoke in studio. And we'll take a look at the NFL scoreboard. How about the Raiders? They get shut out by the Saints. And again, the Saints will be coming to Pittsburgh in two weeks, but the Raiders have got major what problems over there. What has happened to there. the Raiders? I don't know, but every time uh, McDaniels gets the job as a head coach, it doesn't seem to work, and it's not working right now. And they got high-priced players over there. <laughs> And I'm sure they're not happy. Atlanta keeps on going. They beat Carolina 37-34. That was in overtime. The Patriots, you saw uh, the conclusion of that game on KDK. Bill Belichick and company. A big win for them over the Jets at the Jets 22-17 that final. As far as the standings in the AFC North, the that. Ravens won on Thursday night. So they jumped to 5-3. The Steelers are dead last. Uh, and looking at a high pick right now at two wins and six losses. So Dan Moore spoke after the game. He did not have a good game. Quite frankly, the offensive line in general did not have a good game. This is what he had to say after the game. Great week to, to start that. You guys have been over a lot. I'm sorry if you asked me this, but the pre-snap penalties, what, is, is that becoming bothersome? It seems like it's, as a group, it's happening a lot. Yeah, definitely. It's something that we have to clean up, especially on offense. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you, you never want to put yourself in binds like that, going from first and 10 to first and 15 or second and eight, and second and 13. Um, it just puts you in unmanageable situations. So uh, definitely can't shoot ourselves in the foot like that. Dan Najee mentioned accountability. Is that something that everybody's got to kind of take a look at themselves right now? Definitely. Um, I think we all have to hold each other accountable, ourselves accountable. Um, yeah. I mean, it has to. It has to. Um, but at some point, we have to execute, you know. Um, at some point, it's, it's got to be enough of talk, and it's got to be a, more of just being on the field and executing plays that are called. Is it frustrating that it's been weeks down and nothing really has changed, or do you feel like some? You've taken some steps. I mean, it is frustrating, but I mean, um, 
I, I mean, we're, we're in the business of winning. So when, when you don't get the goal accomplished, obviously, uh, you're, you're, you're looking to figure out what the problem is. So, I mean, we, I think we do things good, but I think we're harping on what we do bad so that we can correct that. How do we come at the time? Definitely. Definitely. Um, team meetings um, and maybe just things working on fundamentals as well. Well, the Steelers gave up plenty of sacks, a lot of pressures today. Uh, I, I have to wonder, I know Kendrick Green hasn't played pretty much all year. Is he struggling that badly, Chris, that he can't get in this lineup? I saw Dotson today. He did not look very good. Uh, he was the starting center last year, and that was miscast for him. Yeah. What happens? But, Are you just going to stick with these guys and there's no other answer? Here's how it is. The reality is harsh. If he was good enough, he'd be out there. And obviously, he's not good enough to be out there on the field right now. And we saw what it was on the preseason. And, and, and he's struggling to make blocks. And he's struggling this transition to guard in the NFL. And last year at center. But you look at his offensive line. And Dan Moore Jr. really struggled today at that left tackle spot. He was getting beat repeatedly, Bob. We saw many times while we were watching the game together where he was tackling guys and the flag wasn't thrown. Right. And uh, he had his hands full. And this offensive line, if you want to really see something, Steeler Nation, go back and watch this film. Because you'll see when the Eagles blitzed, they were getting after offensive linemen, getting after our running backs that were stepping up and putting pressure on Kenny every single time. When we blitzed, we ran right down the middle of the offensive line, right down the middle of the running backs, and Jalen Hurts sat back there with no pressure. And so the Eagles got after offensive line, and it was a tough day for them. And we've got to watch that film maybe and say, okay, this, we got to do this. We can't run down the middle of people. we got to get on the edge of an offensive lineman or running back and get to the quarterback, not dance with these offensive linemen. And that one – situation was an exact example of what you just said. It was a strip sack that they created because of pressure. Yep. Kenny Pickett immediately had to do something and he went to his right and at that point, you know, Javon Hargrave and company just take the ball away. It's a simple play, but it turned everything around because they were within one possession of the game. That was the second time that Jay Wobble, Javon Hargrave, beat Dotson and got a sack. And here was a sack fumble and really this is what blew the game open because we know what happened. Two plays later, Two plays later, the Eagles went 54 yards and capped it with an 11-yard run by Miles Sanders untouched into the end zone. That's where this game really just blew up, right. and they pulled Jalen Hurts a couple plays later. It was over. And Brown on that play, that's where Mika took a bad angle, and he got 30-some yep. yards on that play. 43 prior yards. To 43. That's huge. That's a, that's a so many play. of those big chunk plays. That's been the problem all season long with the Steelers, giving up way too many of those. Now let's take a look at the neighborhood Ford store road ahead. The road begins with a bye week, and that's next Sunday. And then two home games. You got New Orleans, and they won, you saw today, blanking the Raiders 24 to nothing. That's not <laughs> easy to do, but they did it. Their defense is playing well. Then they have Cincinnati. That would be a night game, a Monday night game. And then you have one, at, or is it a Sunday night? One of the two is a Sunday. The next one at Indianapolis, I believe, is a Monday night, Monday night game, at Atlanta. Yep. None of those will be easy. And quite no. frankly, they're probably yep. not going to be favoring any of those games. Atlanta's in first place. And you saw what the Saints did today to the Raiders in Cincinnati. We'll see what they do tomorrow night. But they can be tied with the Ravens for first place uh, coming up after tomorrow night against the Browns. I mean, there are some tough games here. It doesn't get easier. Somebody said to me, Chris, the, 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 the schedule's going to get easier for the Steelers, but this isn't the Steelers of old. There, there's no games on this, on this schedule that's going to be easy for this 2022 version of the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, should be a very interesting week. Again, there could be some decisions made, some changes. Who knows? The uh, trade deadline is Tuesday at 4 p.m., and so far two trades have been made. There is speculation. There are some Steeler names that are popping up. We'll see if anything materializes. In the meantime, we're going to uh, tell you to stick with us and air your opinions. It's coming up. We have a uh, special Steelers edition. Are you ready for that, Bob? I'm ready for it. All Our right. Co Co -time. Nightly sports call. It's G-rated. Keep that in mind as we look on the sun setting on a beautiful day in Pittsburgh and where the sun was setting quickly on the Steelers on the field today. Thanks for joining us for the Extra Point. We have your calls next on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call.